Hi, and welcome to the unit 1.2b, Foundations of Chemistry uh, Notes. This is a two-part video. Um, we're going to be focusing on the second half of key question one, how do we represent matter? Um, just like with any note video, you need to annotate, and there will be two BSEPR videos in embedded in this video and in the assignment, however, you're only required to watch one. So as you probably know, we have been um, for this unit focusing on basic representations. Today we're focusing on the basic representation via CPR model. Okay, so um, Via CPR theory, why is it important? It's important because it explains two-dimensional shapes of molecules, which supports experimentally determined bond angles of molecules, also molecular polarity, and hybridization, which we'll, we're not going to cover um, until later in the year, but via CPR supports all that. To be clear, when I say a bond angle, it's an angle formed by two bonds, and it's made of three connected atoms. So the, all three atoms have to be connected together in order for them to make a bond angle. Um, before we get into via CPR, I'm going to have you pause and watch video one. Um, you can choose to watch video two. That part is optional, but you must watch video one. And then when you finish watching that, press play again, and we'll um, continue with via CPR. All right, some key points that you probably got from the video is that via CPR stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. And the valence shell um, electron pairs are the lone pairs and bond pairs in a molecule. This uh, theory is, again, useful for predicting structure. And what happens is the bonds and the lone pairs, they try to arrange themselves to be as far apart from each other as possible. There's different levels of repulsions, however, so um, bond pair bond pairs have the smallest or the weakest amount of repulsion, and lone pair lone pair has the greatest. All right, so let's just take a moment to orientate ourselves with this CFU. Um, read through the CFU, and when you press play again, the answer will be revealed. So here's the answer. The reason why, um, even though in the Lewis dot structure, which looks flat and, and it appears that the bond angle, which you can measure it from chlorine to the carbon to the chlorine, this angle here is, is 90 degrees in the Lewis dot structure. Molecules are not two dimensional, they're three dimensional. And according to the VSCPR th theory, the um, bonds in CCL4 want to adopt the tetrahedral geometry, um, with, which has angles of 109.5 degrees. Okay, so now let's go into um, VSCPR and the shapes associated with it. Oftentimes when doing VSCPR, students will think that they have a lot to memorize. They usually get a chart and they see the chart and they go, oh my gosh, I have to memorize all these things. But the truth is you don't really need to memorize many um, of the uh, names and the and the angles, etc. You can figure that out with just a little bit of knowledge of geometry. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by presenting to you guys the five fundamental VSCPR shapes, and they're based on the number of electron domains. And I'm also presenting the electron domain geometry, starting with the first one here. When you have two electron domains, one, two, around a central atom, it's um, the electron dom domain geometry is linear. When you have, and that makes sense because it looks like a line. When you have three electron domains, one, two, three, it's called trigonal planar. So let's break that name down because the name makes sense. If you connect all of the terminal atoms, it makes a triangle. And it's planar because it's flat. The next case is electron, um, we have Four electron domains the geometry is tetrahedral and you may not um, that may be one you have to memorize because um, this name comes from a tetrahedron so if you look up what a tetrahedron looks like that's what a tetrahedral um, is describing um, the next one is when we have five electron domains this is called trigonal bipyramidal so let's break that one down trigonal is implying a triangle and then pyramidal is implying something that's shaped like a pyramid so the base of this pyramid needs to um, 
have a triangular a triangular shape. The by means that there are two of them. So what are they talking about? If you trace this shape, um, this area here going around is called the equatorials, like the equator position. Um, and you connect the atoms to the top, you can make a, a trigonal pyramid at the top. And then you can also do the same thing for the ones at the bottom. So it also makes a triangular uh, trigonal um, pyramid at the bottom. So that's why it's bipyramidal. There are two pyramids there. The last one is when you have six, this is called an octahedral. And you, if you look up an octahedron, you would see where they got this name from because um, that's what this shape implies. So now let's go into the angles of all these shapes. Uh, starting with linear, the shape is 180 degrees, just like with the line. For trigonal planar, the angle, um, if you picture drawing a circle around these terminal atoms, and you divided that circle into th three parts, remember a circle is 360 degrees, well 360 degrees divided by 3 is 120, and so that's the angle there. Tetrahedral, again, this is the one you probably have to memorize, it's 109.5. Now we're going into trigonal bipyramidal. There are two different positions, uh, the ones as I mentioned before, going around are equatorial, like the equator, and then the ones up and down are called axial positions. So for the equatorial um, angle, that's 120 degrees, and then for the axial one, that's 90 degrees. And they, it looks like it should look like a right angle, um, which we see here. And this one again should mirror the trigonal planar. Finally, we have the octahedral. This also has two positions: equatorial going around. There's four equatorial positions and then the two axials up and down and the equatorials are 90 degrees and so are the axials but they are distinct positions okay so those are the fundamental shapes now I'm just gonna go back real quick to show you the fundamental shapes because all other shapes can be derived from these fundamental shapes by just placing lone pairs around the central atom so what sort of things happens when you have lone pairs? What happens to the fundamental shape? First of all, the electron domain geometry stays the same. So no matter how many lone pairs you have, if the, elect if the number of electron domains are the same, the electron domain geometry is the same. The things that do change, however, are the molecular geometry or shape. And um, because the bond pair, lone pair, and lone pair, lone pair repulsions may push bonds closer together, the the bond angles may also change, usually getting smaller. So let's take a look of, of that happening here. We have a trigonal planar, and um, let's say we were to add on uh, one lone pair. Now before we add on the lone pair, remember the angle is 120 degrees. So if we add on the lone pair, that's going to push these bonds closer together because they want to be uh, away from that lone pair which will reduce the angle to less than 120 degrees. So the shape is no longer trigonal pyramidal, it's bent, and the angle is a little bit smaller than 120. All right, we're going to do the same thing with um, this tetrahedral shape. If we were to place one of the bonds with a lone pair, which of the following is the most likely bond angle for NH3? Pause the video when you press play again, um, the answer will be revealed. Great, so the answer here is 107 degrees. You may be thinking, well, couldn't it be 90? I know it's going to be less than 109.5, but couldn't it also be 90? Um, 90 is too small because um, usually the repulsions don't decrease it that significantly. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is that lone pairs are selective. So we just talked about going on some lone pairs and seeing how the angles change. But when you're dealing with an octahedral or trigonal bipyramidal, because they have two different types of positions, axial and equatorial, um, where you put the lone pair matters. In all the other cases, where you put the lone pair does not matter. So just for trigonal bipyramidal and octahedral, it matters. And the lone pairs are going to find the position that minimizes the lone pair repulsion. So let's take um, the trigonal bipyramidal. Here we have uh, the lone pair in the axial position, and here we have it in the equatorial position. So what do we mean by minimizing the repulsion? In the case when it's in the axial position, you have uh, this lone pair has one, two, three 
axial angles of 90 degrees. Um, so you have lone pair, bond pair, repulsions with 90 degrees, and there are three of them. When you have it in the equatorial position, so when the lone pair is here, um, it has one, and then another one, two, 90 degrees repulsions. But then they have one, two, 120 degree repulsions. So because the angle of 120 is greater than 90, that means that this repulsion is a lot less. Here you have three 90s, and here you have only two 90s, but two 120s. And so this structure is more favorable um, because it has less, um, the, the lone pairs are farther away from the bond pairs. And this is called a seesaw shaped. Now what happens if we have a second bond pair? So we already know that we're going to put the first, sorry, lone pair. We already know we put the first one in the equatorial position. Well, where would we put the second one? Again, we want to try and minimize repulsion. So take a moment to see if you can figure out which one, the one on the left or the one on the right, will be the better candidate. Great, in this case, it's the one on the right. So what happens in this case, you want to um, focus on now the lone pair, lone pair repulsion, because that's the greatest repulsion. Remember, it's the strongest repulsion in all of the uh, electron pair repulsions. And here, the lone pair, lone pair repulsion has a 120 degree angle, where in this case, it has a 90 degree angle. So that means that these are much closer, where here they're further apart. So this is a more favorable structure, and it's called a T-shape. Okay, now you're going to try CFU2, which um, you're going to name the, the, which name best describes the shape of KRF4, square pyramidal or square planar. Remember, pyramidals shape like a pyramid and planars are flat. And what are the bond angles in KRF4? For this one, you want to utilize the Lewis dot structure, which shows you that there are two lone pairs around the central atom. So we're dealing with four bond pairs and two lone pairs, and that means we're starting with an octahedral electron domain geometry. And you need to replace either the axial or the equatorial positions with lone pairs and see which one will give you the more favorable geometry. When you're ready for the answer, press play. Okay, so if you were to try putting the lone pairs in the in two in the two axial positions, that has the most favorable um, geometry because the angle here is 180 degrees. It's 180 degrees uh, between the two. Whereas if you put one in the uh, axial and one in the equatorial, then they have a 90 degree angle. Or if you put two in the equatorial, they would still have a 90 degree angle. So this one's more favorable because the lone pairs are farther apart. Okay, what you have now is a chart here with the different types of uh, geometries. Um, you're gonna fill in this chart by drawing in visuals, just sketching in models of the different types. All right, I hope you find this video helpful. Um, come back for part two and have a quality day.